Hello, and welcome to my efficient design series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24. That's right, we are now in 0.24, and we are specifically in 0.24 32-bit version because I'm reserving the 64-bit version for my modded series. This is going to be a completely stock series, and I'm going to be doing career mode in it, and we are going to try and be as efficient as possible. And hopefully I will come up with some interesting ways to do that. Let's go to Mission Control, where we're going to pick out some contracts quickly, because we need to get through all the basic stuff. Uh, those two are the only ones that I think I'm going to get away with with just the simple starting parts, so let's go with that. And except for Scott Manley's intro video to Point Two Four, I haven't watched any other videos, and I don't plan to, so hopefully I'll be able to come up with some interesting uh, novel solutions to things. Uh, who knows, but I suspect I'll be starting uh, the same way everybody else does uh, with this sort of rocket, basic rocket. Now you could do the science stuff on the pad, but I'm going to reserve that for situations where I actually need to. So we'll start like this first. I'll need to make sure to replace my flag, uh, put my flag back into this series. I've just started this series and I forgot to do that. Uh, so this is not going to be much of an intro series. I'm not going to, uh, in other words, I'm not going to explain how everything works. I'm just going to try and do things as efficiently as possible. So I'm expecting that people have watched other intro videos where all the uh, features have been discussed. And uh, yeah, so let's go. Power is on. And our objectives are to launch a new vessel and to achieve an altitude of 5,000 meters. Go. Now, when doing this, you might wonder why I picked uh, this setup instead of, say, the tank and liquid engine. Uh, and that's because uh, this can survive the parachute, so we'll be able to bring this all back down. You might also wonder why I'm bothering to tilt towards the ocean when I could try and do a landing back at the KSC. And that's because it's more likely to uh, bring the solid fuel rocket back down intact if you land in the water. So we've passed our uh, desired altitude. I'm gonna tilt over a little bit more to make sure we do end up landing in the ocean. I don't know if we've done a good enough job with that. Okay, but while we're up here, let's do a crew report. Flying over Kerbin Shores, fine. We do intend to bring everything back down, so no problem with keeping the data. And let's see what kind of apoapsis Jebediah Kerman manages to reach. Okay, looks like uh, around 17,400 to 500. Not bad. Headed back down now, definitely at the water. So I'm going to sacrifice the fact that I'm not going to get 100% of the return value of this, which you would get if you landed on the KSC itself, well, on the runway or the launch pad. So I'm going to sacrifice that uh, money in exchange for making sure that this survives, and also for the additional science that I'm going to get by doing a uh, stuff over the water. wonder if they've added new science around the monoliths yet. I doubt it. Uh, on the, all the Easter eggs around the system, I was looking for that, but I don't think they've done it yet. We might have to try and find out. Okay, I'm going to deploy parachutes now. And the parachute is open, so that means I'm willing to let Jeb EVA here. EV report. Okay, keep the data. Board. Very nice. And returning to the service. And there we go, splash down. Let's not waste this chance either. Jeb can EVA take the surface sample. It appears to be 
uh, it appears to dramatically increase the surface humidity of anything it touches. Keep the data. And of course, a spacesuit was necessary because he would likely drown otherwise. All right, so let's recover the vessel and see what we've got. Okay, so here we are, crew port, EVA, EVA, surface sample, another EVA, and of course, recovery of the vessel. And that was a total of 35 points. Apparently, we start off with five science. I didn't even notice that. Uh, parts. We got 97.6% of the value because we landed eight kilometers away from KSC. Worth it considering the extra science that we got out of it. And of course, the Solid Fuel Booster survived, so we got that back. Of course, that wasn't the most expensive part, but it counts. And it's well worth well more than the, the percentage that we lost for not landing at the KSC. So we got pretty much everything back, except for the fuel. And of course, a reputation boost because Jeb survived. All right, let's go to the contracts and see what else we can pick up. Now everybody goes through this phase where we do some of the testing. I don't think there's any problem with uh, testing the Mark 16 parachute. Uh, though that's a pretty high speed to be testing that parachute. Uh, but we'll take it. They should give... You know what I think they should do is the duration should be radically less. Uh, that would uh, give us a little bit more of a challenge. So giving us this much time to test these parts is a little bit too much. Um, this is a tricky one. Lighting a solid fuel booster at that altitude, uh, that's a little bit tricky. I'll take it anyway. Uh, let's just take everything. Uh, well, let's let's hold off on atmosphere and orbit, maybe, uh, just so that I can do that a little bit more properly. Uh, sure, stack decoupler, why not? And 22,000 meters is trivial. Uh, let, let's let's focus on what we've got there right now before we try and make orbit. I also want to just uh, unlock basic rocketry, which apparently they expected people to unlock right away since uh, they gave us the five science for it. So okay, we've unlocked that. Um, survivability. Let, let's see what we can do without these. Uh, and, you know, it's just um, curiosity's sake. So I'm just uh, trying to see what I can manage, what contracts I can manage to do without uh, unlocking anything new. Oh, we've still got the previous craft that I didn't name because, well, it's too easy to build it anyway. So, here we go. We're going to test the Mark 16 parachute. And that we will have to open between those two altitudes and at that speed. So we should be going pretty fast. And we probably will be because we're going to be lighting a solid fuel booster between those altitudes. Uh, yeah, okay. I think, uh, I think I know how to do this. So we'll light a solid fuel booster at that altitude. And what we need is uh, liquid fuel. Now this is going to be expensive. We're going to have to dump the liquid fuel engine. Do we have... We might have uh, been better off having some radial chutes too. I don't know if uh, the liquid fuel engine would have survived or not, but it might have given us a little bit more of a... Ch you know, let's do that. Let's uh, open the technology to get radial chutes. Maybe we can get that. And maybe we can... After separating the liquid fuel engine, get its parachutes deployed. I don't know if that's going to be possible. No, I don't think we got to stay within physics range, though. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's get the radio shoes. Let's see if we can do that. So quickly, uh, we will unlock survivability to get the radio shoots and see if that might help us bring everything back down safely. So I think we need to look at a slight change of plans here. We'll make the main body with the... Oh, there's not going to be much reaction power, huh? So that can carry two, 21 tons, just about. And what we've put on there is uh, not much. So... What we're talking about is one ton, seven tons. 
8. A little over 8. Okay, and we want... This is... Well, you know what? Uh, just in case... Oh, we, we, we were... St oh, I have to change my plans. We need to, to test the stack decoupler as well. No, this isn't going to be what I want to do. Alright, uh, it looks like we're going to have to ditch the expensive liquid fuel engine. That's... No, I don't think so. Maybe we could go saw boosters all the way. That might be cheaper. Stack decoupler. Might also be very, very inadvisable. I'll do the calculations in a sec. Uh, this is not necessarily what we should be doing. So stack decouplers, achieve altitude, light a solid booster, mark 16 parachute. Okay, now let's let's optimize this actually. So we've got a let's say one ton command pod, and it's a let's say five tons altogether here. This thing's thrust can carry 25 tons, so we can limit this to. Well, let's give it a little bit more juice. Okay. So that, and then uh, we add four more tons. Let's call it five more tons. So this is all ten tons. And so this engine, let's go to 50% on this. And because we want to get off the ground pretty, pretty quickly, let's go to 100% on this. The question is whether we're actually going to end up being able to light this rocket at the right time and hopefully the command pod will continue to have the right uh, gimbling force to allow us to do that. Alright, uh, yeah, I don't want to name this either. Let's just make sure we got the staging right. Okay, this definitely looks like a Jeb, Jeb-like rocket. I hope that the couplers aren't too expensive, are they? 400? Oh... Alright, uh, let's try this out. Okay, here we are. I've got the contracts all open. So let's prioritize. The first thing we need to do... Uh, I don't think there's got to be any problem getting the stack decoupler off at the right time. Oh heck, let's just go for it and see what happens. we are at least got to achieve the altitude that we need and we've got like 100 days to figure out the rest. So, let's go. Actually, let's go inland this time. See how that works out for us. Oh, that's earlier than I thought it was. Okay, well, uh, we should decouple at some point, but we need to get more speed, it looks like. 400 meters per second to 600. Not going quickly enough. That might not be obvious, but uh, actually, to gain speed, you really do want to be going horizontally. Uh, so you're not losing to gravity, and I am going to be losing to gravity. I can't ignite the stack decoupler at the right time. What we might do is we might be able to test the saw fuel booster at the right time though. Let's uh, decouple and come on, come on, ah oh, nuts, we're not going to, and we're not going fast enough anyway, so okay let's just go for height. 
we also need to go for speed. This is the best uh, point for doing both, really. Okay, definitely going fast now. Well, I'll be going very fast in order to get the parachute deployed at the right time, and uh, we're we're within the range for that. Um, we're going to need to go above twenty-two thousand meters, though, in order to get that one done. Okay, we've got that. Let's go horizontal now. Okay. Ah, darn. I was hoping to hit the surface here, but it looks like we might overshoot. Okay, need to get down to where we can deploy the parachute properly. Hope that the speed holds out while we're trying to test the parachute at a high speed here. Okay, looks like we're in all the good conditions. Parachute deployed successfully, so successful test there. Did not test the solid fuel booster or the stack decoupler at the right time though. So this is something you definitely didn't see me do in previous series, considering I usually avoid solid fuel boosters quite a lot. I mean, obviously I started with the same sort of basic construct and did use uh, SRBs in the initial stages of stuff, but not too much. No need to do any more stuff over the water. We've done those already. So just bring him back down and recover him and we're not going to get quite as much as we did last time uh, this costed uh, quite a little bit more but we did finish two contracts so we'll make up for it okay settle down so not much science out of that but in terms of the parts we got back uh, it was worth 91 percent uh, and you know we lost two stages. Not the greatest thing. Jeb survived, of course. Didn't get quite as much reputation for having him survive as we did last time. I suppose eventually it's going to become all blasé and we expect to get him and we don't get any additional boost out of bringing him back, but we'll see. Uh, that's pretty tight requirement for firing the LVT-45. Yeah, we, we could do that. Um, Rear mount parachute. Well, I've been waiting to try that out. I'm going to fly it over Kerbin. Okay. Separatron. Well, that's trivial. Okay. Radial decoupler at those altitudes? Sure. Sure. Oh, we haven't even unlocked this one yet, so we'll get this part temporarily. But they want it on a suborbital trajectory? No, I'll pass on that for now. Um, let's hold off on the suborbital trajectories for as well. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll get the 33,000 in and then we'll go for the suborbital trajectories. Uh, nah, let's 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 get let's go for this first. Sure. Okay, let's go to VAB. So we, what we've got here is we need to be able to ignite the LVT45 at will. That's fine. Uh, so that has to be a center stack, really, and we're going to attempt to retrieve that. And so this is all going to be radio mount parachuted. Like so. And we're going to have to deploy the radial mount parachutes between those altitudes and that speed. Um, 
let's get them on a separate action group as the other parachutes. That's fine. Now we need to test a solid fuel booster at a pretty high altitude. Okay. Cipertron. Well, that's easy. I hope. Let's just have two Cipertrons here. And they're just going to hang out. Okay, I think this looks like a test bed for some SRBs here. So, what do we call such a thing? WKK1. No. WNK1. We need cash one. Or if you like, we need curbs, if you like curbs as the curb currency. Uh, we need curbs one. Okay. Yes. Yes, we do. Um, well, this is a good faith attempt. I haven't made any particular ca calculations ahead of time. Let's hope this remains stable. Okay, so no matter what, the altitude is the main objective. But we're going to try and do everything else as well. That's pretty, pretty tight requirements for the LVT-45. I hope I can get that right. Okay, I'll have to be able to switch the stages just in case I haven't got this right. We've got radial mount parachutes, got all that stuff. Uh, I think the first thing is just radial decoupler between between those should be pretty wide, and if if everything goes right, I should decouple something at that point. Okay, here we go. Uh, yep. So far, so good. Okay, radial decoupler test worked. That's good. Next thing I want to focus on is the LVT-45 actually. Let's make sure that uh, that ignites at the right time. We need to be going at two, 280. Wow. I don't know if we're going to get to the right speed though. Uh, we're not going to get to right speed. Um, okay, well, I'm going to... I'm going to focus on the LVT-45 then. Let's see... Uh, trying to decouple this stuff on the fly is tough. Uh, okay, well... There, how about that? Right. Uh, oh darn, we've passed the uh, altitude. Shoot. Alright, alright. Uh, darn it. Alright, uh, so we're just sort of waiting for Cipertron altitude. Oh, but we're going to fall below Cybertron speed. Okay, uh, ignite that. Decouple those. Right, okay. Next is Cybertrons. I'm not even paying attention to where I'm heading. Okay. Alright, we tested the Cybertrons. Very good. Now, suborbital. Uh, let's just go whatever direction we're pointing. I'm not going to try to correct it. We might be able to get orbital, actually. Uh, too bad we didn't uh, pick that contract up. I didn't even bother to try the LV-909 just yet. Ah, that makes all these missions very tense, doesn't it? Well, let's see if we can get into orbit here. Nope, 
That's uh, suborbital. Should pick that up. Okay, let's not get into orbit. Uh, I don't want to risk not being able to deorbit. Uh, hitting the nighttime side is not very nice, though. But I guess that's where I. Oh well, uh, we should try and get back to Kerbin, shouldn't we? Uh, not Kerbin, sorry. Uh, the KSC. Ah, uh, that's another thing. Uh, we're gonna be so far away from the KSC, we're not gonna get our return value for this stuff. How much will it take to get into orbit? No, that's too much. Don't have that much fuel left in this stage. Well, let's just focus on getting this back intact. Well, so much for altitude records. Probably won't be seeing any more of those. Now, we have to look into when we're supposed to deploy these parachutes of ours. What do you mean parachute? Uh, below 24.4 uh, kilometers. Uh, and I really can't control this. Well, I can, actually. We've still got some thrust here. But I'm not going to try and control the speed. So hopefully we'll be going at the right speed. I'm going to guess we might be going too fast rather than too slow. So I'll just stick with retrograde. Okay, doing what uh, no space agency in their right mind would ever do. This this particular re-entry. Uh, okay. Oh, we're going way too fast. Oh, G-forces. Well, well G-forces don't count, but darn it, we're, we're going too fast to deploy those parachutes. Oh well. Can't do that test. Say us off. So, how how well did we do? One, two, three, four. That could be worse. Four contracts complete on this mission. Okay, uh, where are we? Give me a crew report. Uh, Flying over Kerbin's water. Apparently, we haven't done that before, but I know we've done the EVA and the and the surface sample, so no point worrying about that now. Uh, could have done an in space. I know I should have done the in space uh, EVA report. Missed that, but I think we'll have another chance to do that now. Certainly, don't need to unlock any new parts for that. Let's see if the engine survives. I really... Okay, uh, looks okay. Alright. So managed to nab 11.5 uh, signs. Less than I could have, but uh, still good. And we got back more than I thought. Uh, let, let me see the breakdown of this. Part value plus... How does that work? I mean... Here we get more funds than the part value? Oh, three of them. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sheesh. Alright, so it's like that. Okay. Radium on parachutes, we, we apparently got back and that's worth quite a lot, isn't it? In fact, is that worth more than the actual engine? Yeah. The parachutes are worth more than the engine. I think, I think maybe... Maybe some significant rebalancing is necessary here. Uh, the engine should be the overwhelming cost of the vehicle, not the bloody parachutes. Okay, folks? Uh, let, let's just make that very clear. Alright, so that's good. Uh, we need to send somebody else up. We're not, just not getting enough reputation for bringing Jebediah back from a suborbital mission here. 
so I'll uh, switch to a different main Kerbal next. Okay, we've got a lot of pending contracts here, and I think I'm going to uh, call it a first episode right now. So we've gotten suborbital, and I'm going to pick up the orbital contract as well as this one. And so we're going to pick up every contract that we can get. And in the next episode, tune in to watch whether I can fulfill... Well, let's see how many I can fulfill. I'm not going to even uh, try to say that I'm going to fulfill all of them at the same time. But, uh, well, actually I probably will at least attempt to. Uh, unless I can't build a rocket that can look right and still have all of that going on for it. Alright, so we're going to see, uh, so we're even going to try and light a, one of these in suborbital trajectory. Is that a good idea? Oh, I know what I can do. Just because you light it at suborbital, you don't have to put all the fuel in. Yes, you can tweak the fuel, you don't have to put all the fuel in. So I'll light it for just one second. So yes, we can do that. It's got to be bloody heavy to carry it up there though. Uh, that might have to be a separate mission on its own. I think that will be uh, one mission and then we'll uh, get everything else done in something else. We'll see. Alright, so on that note, uh, thank you for watching this uh, much more exciting way of starting Kerbal Space Program. Uh, frankly, it used to be that the initial missions and everything like that were very mundane. Uh, we had a lot of very simple tasks to achieve. Uh, getting into orbit and uh, doing the science very quickly. But now it's a little bit trickier because of the limitations of the altitude, you know, trying to get stuff done. I don't know if it's as interesting watching it, but I sure know it's uh, fascinating to play it and try and hit between the altitude and speed things, even though sometimes they're not very sensical. Like, uh, this is re going really fast. But, yeah, uh, suspension of this belief for a sec there on that point I think uh, it does make for an interesting challenge so I hope it was enjoyable watching it if you did enjoy watch it watching it please do press like and uh, with that uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time <laughs>